Tristy Davis, an engineer at DigiKey Electronics, and we're here today at the Andretti Racing Paddock at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal, where we have TE Connectivity's resident engineer, Judith Hansel, and Adafruit Industries lead engineer and founder, Lamor Freed. So they're actually gonna talk about sensors, power, and all the cool things that actually go into these electric race cars. Let's see what they have inside. Hello everybody, it's me Lady Ada and we're here in Red Hook, Brooklyn, just minutes away from the Ada Food Factory. We do electronics, but here they're doing a lot of electronics because we're here at the Formula E racetrack pit stop area. I'm here with Judith Henzel from Hi. TE. We hung out a lot last night. She's awesome. She's a, like a resident traveling engineer yeah, with this exactly. team. So uh, Judith, tell us a little bit about what you do here. As, as you said, I'm the embedded engineer from TE Connectivity with Andretti Technologies. So I have the great honor and pleasure to travel around with the whole team to all Formula E races and being part of the team. And normally um, when I'm not traveling around with these guys, I'm based in Indianapolis, di directly at the Andretti shop uh, and doing some development projects there as well. You actually do a couple races. So how, where have you been before? This is like not your first um, rodeo. Exactly. Um, I've been to Buenos Aires, Mexico, Monaco, Paris, and Berlin so far. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot. And that's yeah. just Formula E, or do you do other series racing? No, that's just Formula E, but Andretti is also doing like the Indy Car Series, Indy Light, and also Rally Clubs cars. And what's special about Formula E? What, how is this different than all the other formulas? Um, the special thing is these ones are like whole electric cars. That's the first thing, which is really kind of special. So no gasoline. No gasoline no, at all. No old dinosaur. Green energy. Completely green. Completely green. And the second thing is um, these racetracks are built directly into city centers really often. Like in Buenos Aires, we've been directly into the city center. Monaco, it was like the Formula One track or a part of it. Um, and in Berlin, it was like an old airport. But actually, these series are racing directly in the city center as well. Okay, so what's going on? What is this? What's happening here? Um, that's just like yesterday we've been here and built up like the whole garage you see here. Okay, so you have to build this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The tents were here, but all the other stuff we need yeah. to build up. Um, and today it's just like checking the cars, preparation for scrutineering tomorrow and things like that. Wait, what's scrutineering? Um, scrutineering is like um, a technical inspection of the FIA. So every team needs to go there with the cars and they check like they are secure and safe and after like the FIA specification. So one of the things that I watched is a video that you were in yeah. and you mentioned about the Formula E, which I think was interesting, is you said, you know, it's a pretty young series. It's like what, this is for years? Three years old. Three years old, yeah. so it's very young compared to like the gasoline, yeah, old exactly. school style. But what's interesting is, is that the car design, the engineering, you don't get to engineer every part of the car. Exactly. So what does the team get to do and what do you have to do to meet the standards? Um, so the standard is like the whole carbon monocoque you see here and yeah. like the tires and so on. That's like all kind of standard things. Um, they opened the powertrain this year the first time. So uh, what Andretti did was developing their own electric motor so far. So this is some kind of new step of development and um, you are free to use some uh, sensors for development as well. Okay, so basically you don't get to choose like the carbon fiber stuff, but you can choose how to charge the battery, what sensors to put in, exactly. how much you know, torque you want to give. And then now this year, you can make your own motor. Previous years, exactly. you had to use a standard motor. Exactly. So it's like every year they loosen it a little bit? Yep, exactly. Okay. So that's kind of fun. That's, that's where cool. the innovation comes from. Exactly. Okay, and so you're here with TE Connectivity. Right. And uh, what y'all do is the sensor stuff. Exactly. That's your expertise. And the connectors and wiring. And, yeah. and which is actually the most important part. Yeah. Because these cars go very fast. And they, like, they shake and they, you can't have the wires just come out. Exactly. I thought what we could do is you could go through the car and we could show off you know, the part that's not being worked on right now. Yeah, sure. Super busy. And maybe you could point out some of the things that you work on mm -hmm. and the cool connectors and sensors that yeah, are inside. Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's do this thing. <laughs> So this is actually a pretty small enclosure. Like, why, like, why is it so small? 
Um, the car has a maximum weight of 880 kilograms, uh, including the driver. So it does need to be so small and the drivers need to be kind of compact. So, so like you and I could do it. Like we're pretty compact yes. people, yeah. And you see like the um, steering wheel here and a lot of other connectors from TE here in as well. Oh wow, look at all these like, and intense connectors. So they all have this knurling. They're exactly, very solid exactly. and yeah. waterproof connector. So who actually makes the wiring harness, like the molding and, and the heat shrinking? Do you do that? Um, do you have a team that does that? As well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Not for the complete harness, but for this connectors. That, that's all made that's by That's like a lot of work. Yeah, I know. it is. That looks like a battery. Can red and black. Is that the battery? That's connected for this battery. Battery? Yeah. yeah. Loom. Okay. Yep. And what's this battery? That's not that's the main like, battery. That, no, that's like a small uh, battery to ensure that everything in here is, is right working. Okay, so you got yep. a little battery. What's this thing here? Um, fire extinguisher. Okay. You also have like um, a direct like a uh, plug for a fire extinguisher. If like the battery starts burning, you can directly plug a fire extinguisher in there. Yeah. Um, and there you have like the accelerometer. Oh wait, that's accelerometer, yay! yay! Wait, hold on. <laughs> so I, I brought some of the sensors so we could hold them up. Okay, so this is the accelerometer and this exactly. is a, a 50 G tri -axis. No, that's the, that's the new one. This is this the 50 is G. 50 G. This that's, one's like 30? That's like 30, exactly. Okay, this is yeah. 30, this is 50. So this is the triple axis accelerometer and this is used exactly. for a couple things. Right? So yeah. like, what do you do with this data? For the one thing, you can check um, like if the, if the track or something is bumpy and um, the steering gets some bumps as well. You can see whether your steering or suspension is um, too tight. So you can like, you know, okay, my springs are like too tight now. So you can lose them a little and soften them a little bit that the car is more smoothly on the track. Yeah. Um, also, if there is a crash for sure, you detect the forces. So that, so that sensor is back there, right underneath the yeah. driver's seat. Exactly. Okay, so you can really, and it's connected to the chassis, yep. like directly. And then this is neat, so this is the steering wheel. Exactly. And like, and I can turn it, and it actually like, you know, the wheels turn, which yep. is like pretty cool. It's like direct drive, which I like. And then there's a TFT. So what gets displayed on here? Um, the driver is able to switch pages during a race. But they have different data options and setups of the car, so they can change during a race which one suits best. Um, and, and on it, does it show like when it's when you're driving? Does it show like the temperature of the battery and the speed and all exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah. And so back there is there's the battery and the engine. The and battery, working on it. the inverter system, the engine, transmission, and okay, so on. Okay. So we, yeah, we, we're exactly. not going to mess because they're, they're busy, but we're going to show yeah. off the sensors that are in it. So there's this temperature sensor. So this yeah. measures the temperature of the battery exactly. case. And then what do you do with this data? Why, why are you measuring the temperature? Um, the temperature of the battery is really kind of important because um, there is only a small range of um, where it's working properly. Yeah. So um, between 23 degrees and up to uh, a maximum of 68, at 68 degrees, Celsius, the car is completely like shutting down. Just point. drawing energy from the battery heats it up, recharges exactly. it, heats it up. So it does heat up, but if it gets too hot, it shuts down. So we have a really nice, uh, this is a, a, a platinum sensor, really sweet. So it's got this nice uh, Teflon coating, which I like, very heat resistant. And then uh, we also have this. The pressure sensor. Pressure sensor, okay. Yeah. So then what's what's this for? This one is placed uh, in, in the rear. So um, this is for like measuring the oil uh, pressure you have. Uh, operating in, in, the, in the gearbox. Okay. So you can check whether enough um, oil is in the system or yeah. whether you need to refill like 100 milliliters or so. Well, does, does the driver know that or is it more like when no, you No, that's the pit? more like checking after the race. Okay, so some sounds like there's some sensors that are like, you know, you can't overload like the driver. The driver's driving. Exactly. They, they can't do like differential equations while they're driving. I mean, not yep. yet. But uh, so what you do is you collect a bunch of data and then you analyze it back here and mm -hmm. then there's some data that they see immediately, the important stuff. Okay, and then oh, we have this thing. This is really neat. Do you know where this is? This is like that, the That's the, the, the position sensor in the, in the back steering. This is like moving with the suspension. So yeah. you really see like how the su suspension is behaving and moving during the car is on the track as well. So this is vibrating too much or like, oh, exactly. too tight. If it's too sloppy, it's like mm -hmm. too loose. So they take this measure, it's a potentiometer, but linear. Yeah. And like really durable. Okay, and then I have like one more question. So there's four cars here. Why are there four? Um, good question. Yeah. Um, we have like two drivers and every driver has like uh, two cars. That's the reason why the battery of the cars is only lasting for like half a race. They are swapping the car in between the race. So jumping from one car to another and going out with the second car on the track again. 
Um, that's because we have like a capacity of the battery of around like uh, 28 kilowatt hours. This will be increased for season five up to 54. Then no car swap would be needed anymore and then we will have only one car. Okay, and then the battery, is, is it a standard battery or do you guys make the battery? No, the battery is made by um, the supplier or company Williams. Um, the battery's weight is about 350 to 400 kilograms. Okay, so it's like half the car. Exactly. So the battery's enclosed, which is good. It's, it should be, it's like, should be safe. But we bought a little battery. So this little lithium polymer battery, yeah. just <laughs> I mean, look, it's what I got. It's so this so one is a half an amp hour at 3.7 volts. So it's about 1.5 watts, watt hour. So this yeah. is how many? Uh, this one has like 27 kilowatts hour. Okay, so this is like thousands of thousands of thousands. Okay. But I was talking to one of the engineers and they said what they do, it, they try to design the system and, and inform the driver so that by the time they get to the finish line, there's this much power left. Right? You want to completely deplete the battery as much as you can. But yep. that's, that's the race, right? Not just getting to the end, but doing so with yeah. the least power left. It's, it's being a good mixture of being fast and good with your energy management. Okay, with that, let's go look at some other things in the shop. And now we're, we're in the garage. We're in the back of the garage. Like, this is amazing here. Look at this yeah. collection of bolts. Loctite, like glue Look, and this like is M6 bolts. bolts. Every bolt you could ever want. This is like an engineer's dream. Okay, so now we're in like the back corner of the shop and I thought this was really fascinating. So what is this video system? Um, as you see up there, there are cameras installed like yeah. in all the other garages and what you see here is you see all the other racing teams in their pit. It's, it's for security, right? It's for security reasons that they can check afterwards um, that nobody is doing something against the rules and that everything is just going fine. You know what I, th I like about this? It's not that you're actually going to watch people working, but people know they're being watched. Okay, so we've had a really exciting day here at the paddock at Formula e Racing, Teak Activity, and Judith. Thank you so much for letting you're us welcome. here. This is awesome. We're going to come back to the it race. Awesome. But we actually get to see the cars and the accelerometer. Yes. Um, so to wrap up, I just wanted to like, we get to sort of chat about like the future of Formula E. Where do you think it's going? This is only year three. What's going to happen in the future? This is, as you said, it's only the year three. So I think there will be going on a lot of stuff within the next five to 10 years. So I think like, whole electric cars will be really the future of transportation. Do you think that the kind of technology that the cutting edge, you know, this millisecond timing, high precision tech, is that going to eventually uh, trickle down into the electric cars that we're going to buy? Could be, could be. So a lot of uh, original equipment manufacturers are joining these series now. So um, BMW just announced on Monday that they will officially join in season five. Um, Jaguar joined this year. There are rumors that Mercedes will come into the series next year as well. So all huge like original equipment manufacturers are going into this market to develop for like whole electric cars. The technology that goes into these cars is, is not that much different than the technology we send into space. Like the Mars rover is an electric car, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the same idea and you have the same sensors. It's just the telemetry is like really long. You know, you have to get the data from Mars, but it's basically the same kind of technology. So I think like, this stuff here is, is cool and cutting edge, but it's going to be in space, it's going to be in transportation, it's going to be in our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, it's all going to be batteries, like that's the future. Oh, exactly. Solar, batteries, sensor technologies. And so people were like, I want to do this. Like mm -hmm. they want to be the TE connectivity engineer. They got to travel the world <laughs> and work on these cars. And what do you suggest people learn about or what do they, do they do so they can do what you do? Well, in school I was not good at math anyway, but I still decided to study mechanical engineering and because I wanted to do this I was suddenly really good and interested in maths and I was good in it at university. During I studied I was a part of a formula student team as well so this is like a international design competition so I learned a lot there as well this was kind of a preparation for professional race racing. As I've been within TE Connectivity I was a project manager so I learned a lot like how a huge company works and how you're successful in developing things. Mm -hmm. And then I got a great chance to be here. 
So the kids these days, maybe they do first robotics. It's like, you know, you build little robots in yeah. grade school. And then when, if you go to college or high school, join your local uh, electric car team, because almost every engineering school nowadays has one, even exactly. if it's a small team. Get your practice there, learn how to do wiring harnesses, and then apply for a job at TE. Yeah, and exactly. And then you can be the engineer. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I had so much fun tonight. everybody, we had a great time here with Judith from TE, and Tristides from DigiKey. A lot of fun here, a lot of racing sensors, power systems, batteries. We learned a lot about what goes on in these race cars in Formula E. You want to learn more? Check out digikey.com slash racing. Build your own little race car, like we all did, and join the race team. Thanks, and thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.